Hey everyone, welcome to the channel and another review. I just got back from seeing the Batman at the theater, just released today, caught a 4 p.m. showing, so pretty early on in the evening. Uh, yeah, wanted to catch it before I could get it spoiled, which I managed to, uh, yeah, managed to go in, not knowing anything other than seeing the, the trailers that were out there. Uh, but yeah, I've, I'm back, and so let's, uh, let's talk about it. And as I always do, I start out the review with the synopsis. The synopsis for this one is it's about the Batman and the villain's Riddler. That's pretty much all you got to know, uh, in my opinion. I mean, you could go into more detail than that, but that's, uh, you know, I think I, most people know what Batman is. So, um, yeah, my expectation going into this movie was very high. I would say it's my second most anticipated movie of the year, uh, coming in behind Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So this one I was really looking forward to. I've been, you know, happy all week and happy all day knowing that today I was going to see Batman. And uh, yeah, let's uh, kind of with that, let's get into the review, what I liked and what I didn't like. And we'll start off with uh, the positives, what I liked about the film. And first up, I'd say the we got to talk about the main character. So that's uh, that's Batman. And, uh, yeah, this, well, this take on Batman is surprisingly even more grounded than the Christopher Nolan films. I thought it would be about the same, but, yeah, it's, even, those were, those were pretty grounded, but you still have some things where you're like, I kind of buy the science there, but it's, it's still, I'll, I have to suspend a little bit of belief for, you know, Batman gliding around everywhere, and by the Dark Knight Rises, you had the bat, which he just flew around the city, and you're like, okay, that's, it's not quite like magic or anything, but it's, that's pretty advanced tech, and this movie it felt like just a straight up crime drama that happens to have as its main character a guy who has some issues and wants to dress up like a bat but there was nothing that comes to mind where i actually had to suspend any sort of belief uh when it came to you know kind of any of yeah any sort of absurdity that they might have gone with they didn't uh so that was that was a nice yeah that was that was nice to see so with that yeah the main character of batman I thought was for me I haven't like read the comics or anything my exposure to Batman in the past is limited to the Christopher Nolan trilogy I've seen the Michael Keaton one I think I may have seen a George Clooney one but that's it for the most part I've seen a few of the uh, Batman animated stuff uh, and then obviously well, yeah I've also seen the the Ben Affleck version in the more recent movies so kind of uh yeah some but not all of the exposure to batman so uh to me this felt like a, a refreshing take on the character it felt different than the other iterations that i've seen and so that's that immediately being a reboot or you know uh that was that was yeah i thought well done and you know bringing in Robert Pattinson, I thought he, yeah, made the character his own as the Batman. So some of the things that kind of go into that were that he feels more like a single persona or a, instead of like a split personality that you got in especially the Christopher Nolan films. So it doesn't feel like he's ever necessarily putting on a face and kind of switching between Batman and Bruce Wayne. You just kind of see the Batman in this movie. And uh, he's very, very physical. I think um, probably the most physical that I've seen, although I think the Ben Affleck one would give him a run for his money. But a lot of that, I think, comes down to the sound design. So you could feel his punches through the screen. And you could even, like, feel his footsteps. They were, like, they thudded any time you, like, <laughs> you hear him coming. And so I thought that was, that was all, um, you know, designed well to make him a very menacing sort of character. And... A version of Batman that believably strikes fear into anybody that would see him. Next up, uh, going on to Commissioner Gordon, or I guess in this one he's Lieutenant Gordon. And uh, this one, I've I've liked Jeffrey Wright and a lot of the stuff that he's done. So I was interested when they cast him uh, as as Gordon. And surprisingly, he's actually in the movie a lot more than I thought. I thought he'd just be a pretty side character but they actually make him so that he seems like pretty much an equal partner with batman instead of just like that police guy that's keeping all the other police from arresting Batman. so 
the I mean Batman's still the lead of the movie, but it was it was nice to see them actually like working the cases together and that sort of thing, and they actually you know felt like a, a duo and not like Gordon being needed by Batman just to just as that like policeman on on the inside. And then the next character, Selina, I thought they did a refreshing take on her. I've seen, yeah, a few iterations of this character now, and this one felt new. I mean, it still feels like Selina Kyle and Catwoman, although I don't think they ever used that term in the movie. But the, yeah, it was, I mean, some things are still there, as in, you know, past, past iterations of the movie, her connection with the Batman. And, uh, yeah, it was... Their relationship, though, I thought developed fairly organically. Uh, it was, yeah, it didn't feel very forced, and it was one that I kind of, I believed as it developed throughout the movie. So I thought that, uh, yeah, she was, she was, I liked kind of the new things that they did with her character as opposed to the previous iterations that I've seen. And then going into some of the villains of the movie, we have Falcone and Penguin. I thought both of them were well done. They were, you know, played very good or good, very good versions of, um, you know, crime lords. And, you know, they felt like people that you wouldn't want to mess with. And I thought, yeah, so the actors did a, a great job bringing those to life. And then finally, the main villain, which is the Riddler, which you would, yeah, I assume you know from the the trailers, I think they make it pretty obvious. He was, I thought, a very menacing uh, villain. And the, yeah, I appreciated the mystery aspect that was brought to this film that hasn't really been present in too many other of the Batman iterations that I've seen. So it's, uh, yeah, I... It was, it's not like a whodunit mystery necessarily, but there's, you know, you're working out the pieces of the puzzle as, as Batman is, and I thought that was, that was written well. Alright, so outside of characters, the other parts of the movie that I liked, I thought the cinematography was gorgeous, and just, uh, yeah, there are several times, it's, it's a fairly dark movie, but there are several times where a bright light will shine, and I had to, like, almost squint in the theater, but a lot of, yeah, a lot of really well shot scenes and uh, I think a couple longer takes uh, maybe at least one that I, I noticed but yeah I, I like the lighting and you know the colors used in the movie it's just a really nice looking movie and then the music I thought was was well done as well I believe is Michael Giacchino and uh, it's not quite Hans Zimmer good like from the the Christopher Nolan movies uh, and you know James Newton Howard helped out or they collaborated on that to give both credit uh, but yeah, this is a, it's a good soundtrack, but not, not the best that I've heard. Uh, so, but it, it very, it fit very well. I think it was a more menacing sort of theme that he came up with. And so I thought that that fit this iteration of the character a bit more. And then lastly, I thought it was a very well-written story and, you know, held my interest and was well-paced uh, for being a three-hour film. It was, uh, yeah, it, and like for, it not... I thought it was maybe a little lacking on the action, just a little bit. So the fact that it was able to pace itself out throughout a three-hour duration with seemingly less uh, on the action front, I thought was was good. So just a couple a couple negatives or things that I've got mixed feelings on. The the first is, I mean, I suppose I'm not all that surprised. The movie's called The Batman, and. But yeah, we we don't get all that many Bruce Wayne scenes. We get just a couple, but the fact that it doesn't feel like a split personality and it's just the Batman, and then the Batman gets most of the screen time, and there's, yeah, just, just a few with Bruce. That part of it I kind of miss, but I don't know. It, I just kind of have mixed feelings on it. It's something that I, I enjoyed seeing in the other iterations of the character, but I suppose if they did that as well, the, here I might feel like it's just a bit more of the same. So it was so yeah, it was it was good that it was fresh, but I'm not sure if it's like my favorite most favorite iteration to to go that route. And then the other kind of small criticism, there were, you know, some interesting shots in the car chase that happens, and we've seen, you know, clips of it in the the trailer but in my opinion it was actually pretty like it was one of the least interesting car chases or like least exciting car chases that I've seen on screen 
and that was yeah that was kind of apparent immediately through it and it was like it's actually a bit longer or it's a long enough car chase so it's not just it doesn't happen just super fast but yeah the i don't know i think maybe the director was trying something new like uh for how to film a car chase and i just thought it didn't quite work out but that's a pretty pretty minor nitpick and then kind of the only other thing is the i thought the trailers just showed too much uh in my opinion they show scenes from pretty much the entire like from the beginning to the end they don't show every scene but like clips used in the trailers were were done throughout the entire film and i felt like a lot of the more actiony scenes or like some of the more impressive scenes or like ooh, that would get more like the oohs and ahs were were shown in part in the trailers so nothing comes to mind that was like there's no like scene like that that comes to mind that wasn't shown in the trailer which is a little unfortunate i suppose i mean this this movie's been delayed i believe the first trailer is out either before covid or pretty early on and so yeah i know it's gotten delayed so i imagine that is hard for the marketing team but kind of going back i mean it was the trailers definitely helped me get excited for this movie but if you could somehow manage to see this without seeing the trailers, I think it would be a bit more enjoyable. And then kind of last thing, this isn't anything against the movie. Uh, the one bad thing or a bad part of the experience was the person sitting a few seats away from me checked his phone like 20 times or so. throughout. It. He was on his phone off and on basically the entire movie. So unfortunately, that kind of dampened the experience just a bit. But uh, but not enough overall. It, overall, uh, yeah, it was... It was still a good experience. So, um, yeah, with that, I mean, on that note, I thank everyone who does respect, you know, other people being at the theater and, you know, stay off their phones. And for those of you who maybe check them more often, you know, maybe just have a bit more consideration for other people and not check your phone. If you got to check your phone, don't go to the movie. Like, you, if you got more important stuff to do, do the more important stuff. So... Uh, yeah, that's that's enough of that rant, though. Um, yeah, so that kind of sums up all the, the negatives and the positives of the film. Overall, I thought this was a great movie, definitely my favorite of the year so far, and one that I'd highly recommend. So yeah, and while Batman is Batman, and they don't reinvent the wheel or anything with this movie, it definitely feels like they this iteration is able to stand on its own legs, and be unique compared to previous iterations of the character. So it ends up providing us something that's familiar as Batman, but also feels fresh at the same time. So that does it for my review for the Batman. If you've been able to see it, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, just keep in mind, this is a spoiler-free review. So I mean, I yeah, I'd love to talk about it in more detail, but just keep that in mind if you are commenting down below. Otherwise, if you've enjoyed this review, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe so you don't miss my next review. And with that, uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.